333 by Tanashi. It is 16 songs, 47 minutes long. And uh, I think it's actually a pretty a, a pretty decent album. So it's that like solid we've gotten a bunch of these this year, that really nice neo pop blending of a bunch of different genres into one um, sound that we've gotten a lot in 2021. But it's these these women are female artists are just absolutely destroying the game at it. They're really stepping up their game with everything. And um, yeah, so like going and like jumping into the you have Opening kind of like um, prelude track. That's only like two minutes long of Let It Go. No, sorry, Let Go. Let Go. And it starts off with just her vocals and stuff and then ends up being this nice, decent neo-pop track towards the end to get you into the theme of what, like, the sound of what the album is going to be. Um, it does do the stupid uh, snap clap thing, so I automatically hate that part, but that's fine. <laughs> it's just my... Sean's personal pet peeve. Yeah, yeah, but also before you like super jump in, I will say like the jumping around with this album, the three 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 thing, is um it's a reference to angel numbers, and unfortunately, I've been dating in Los Angeles for too long to understand this is like a like an I guess an astrology adjacent thing where like you see numbers in the world and they represent different like uh I guess like uh, su- suppositions on the future or whatever. Um, I-, I wouldn't read into it too much. You can kind of listen to this album and not like think about all the woo woo shit essentially. Um, I just think that was like an interesting sort of like thing that's sort of referenced as a motif throughout the record, but you can totally listen to this as I did as a person who's generally sort of averse to these kinds of things um, for, you know, like personal uh, life history reasons. <laughs> but like um, largely like I, could see past the theme and like go through it's like okay whatever aesthetic thing but it really is good like music the, the trap and be is uh, the trap parts of the, uh, the record i think are pretty decent like i can see the future i actually really like the production in this song i think within like the trap production of it and whatnot i like the sound of it per se it's like fast paced it's fun it's a, a pretty good track x is with uh jeremy jeremy, jeremy. um is okay. That's why we wanted like the weakest tracks to me because it just sounds like a, like your everyday, you know, modern trap beat and everything on there. And I really don't like Jeremy's part. So yeah, um, I think it's just like that kind of like just like hits a wall onto it, and then it's just that really high pitched trap voice stuff on there, which I never really enjoy too much unless you're race rumored or something. So yeah, um, X had a really like gonna kind of vibe to it as far as like the production i can see that yeah um like yeah i could definitely see it on like a gonna record kind of like a little bit spacey not quite like Lil uzi vert travis scott going wild with the Mm -hmm. electronics but like it's a cool kind of little like symbol thing i like i i guess i'm a little bit like i'm like more privy to trap generally and so i didn't hate it and i sort of like like those chimey things to some extent but i can see that being like kind of lackluster and sort of like oh random thing is kind of here um especially when, like we have other parts of this album that are a lot more um pr- production wise a little bit heavier hitting um i can definitely see that song being like uh, okay not sure about this d- deal but exactly. yeah i can and see the future i think um as a second track does a better job of like giving a better foot forward yeah yeah it's a it's a good f- foot forward then it's a step back and then after that then it's like it gets smooth to me after that smooth sailing throughout the rest of the record you have Bouncing, I, I like. It's a good uh, good track. I shy, uh, shy Guy's like a little interlude piece between um, X and Bouncing. I really like Unconditional a lot as I like the um, the production of it. It's kind of like this laid back, but like um, pretty good production sound and whatnot throughout that track. Um, and then after that, you have Angels with uh, Cash Page. I think that's how you say that. Um, that's about decent right. track too and whatnot and then you have more of dan's um angel interludes the 333 <laughs> <laughs> yeah um it's, it's fun to make, make fun God. of dan um uh with absolutely this is when like well, also, i will pa- so, to, to that i will say yeah. an interesting thing about 333 is it does kind of this um kind of a thing that gold link was experimenting with we are doing kind of these like sort of almost yeah. uh european londonish like break beat kind of things with the songs um doesn't always land perfectly but it's definitely an interesting sound i think in a trap and b context it's um works a lot better um, i like it a lot in this context as i could say i yeah. really like how like it's within 53 it stops and then it pops into that yeah, exactly it kind of sound within there and i really enjoy that 
because we haven't really heard that too much in a trap and be context. I've heard it that with Goldlink, a couple others have tried it, like I've dabbled in it. But this is the first context within a trap. You can kind of hear that sound. And I think like for American audiences or American sound, like kind of hear that a bit more if more and more like trap and be artists here kind of do that sound. That makes sense. Yeah, if they if they take that sort of um risk. Right exactly, there. because yeah. it's something that I don't know if too many people know of or if too many artists around here really know that sound or whatnot, but I think it's something that you could definitely like experiment further on and do a lot with because you have a lot like you have the solid foundation of trap that is established here in the States, but you're now starting to get stagnated with a lot of it. Plus, like even trap and be a neopop, you're starting to get stagnated with a lot of it, especially this year, where now you got to have something else to to really try and push forward and experiment on. I think that's one sound that you could do a ton because it's not just one specific sound within that you can do so much with. It. Yeah, so that's one thing that when I heard through fifty, I'm like, wow, well, I've never. I, it gave me it gave me hope for for like the industry as a whole. If that makes sense. Right, yeah. Um, throughout the record, um, it, it kind of like eases into the latter half of the record. You have a fewer features, I would say, if you're cutting it yes. from like one to seven, eight, roughly, and then like eight to nine to 16. Um, and so you really just get like Tanasha just at her raw form, just like these are pop, like trap and B kind of records, especially like around um, Last Call and The Chase leading up into another like a lead singles, Pasadena with Buddy. Um, you're getting into songs that are just like tried and true pop, which is like not necessarily great, not necessarily bad, but really just kind of says it's, like, okay, this is a canvas for Tanasha as an artist to really like work off of and like show her singing prowess. So like that is really good there. Um, but definitely I think Pasadena is a nice sort of like highlight near the end of the record that would otherwise like mm -hmm. make it sort of seem kind of a little bit like luster otherwise, or like the latter part of it would seem a little bit kind of not leading up to, um, what the first part of it delivers. The first, it's just definitely a top half heavy album for sure. The first half I think is really solid. The second half, again, as you said, it's, it gets more into that like pop ish sound or so, but it's nice because it like the one good thing about it is it has variability within the album. Not every sounds so, song sounds the same at all. Everything is quite different. Um, but within there, like towards the end, it can kind of feel a little dragged on with some of it. But yeah, Pasadena is a really good kind of breaking track within that like ending parts. And the last track, um, it's a rap with Quiet Child and and Kudzai. It's pretty good too as like an ending little trap yeah. track. So. Overall, I thought it was a pretty decent album. Yeah. Um, there's definitely like a ranking of like different Trap and B albums that we've had. I remember last year there were some that were really good and some that like rather disappointed us. But um, this is on the rather good side. Definitely not like the strongest, the most amazing thing, but safely on like the rather, rather good side of like Trap and B right now. I wish it would have taken a few more risks, but I see the risks it take it took and those risks landed pretty well. Um, and... Yeah, overall, I think it was a solid record. Yeah, exactly. So within a crowded market like it is, it's hard to have something that's outstanding. But the track 333, I think, is something that does stand out, at least for me as like as a music reviewer and stuff, that we always try to have something different, a different type of sound. And it's something that is nice to hear. Anyways, I'm going on. We have our arbitrary scale this week because we always have arbitrary scales because normal scales, you know, half the time don't make sense and people misconstrue it all the time. So we just make up shit because it's audio face. This week it is obscure Olympic sports because it's the closing ceremonies today slash I think yesterday. I don't remember because Japan's way ahead of time in the US. Yeah, slash um, tomorrow's is like who knows when the podcast gets uploaded slash two days ago. So, you know, it happened. The Olympics happened, occurred. Exactly. Exactly. They did occur. Um, those beds were cardboard, uh, but we're moving on. So this is a solid air pistol for me. All right. Uh, Which I didn't even know was a thing, by the way. I was like, that's hilarious. That air pistol is an Olympic event, but I'm down. I'm going to go with um, skateboarding. I've always just found skateboarding, that to be yeah. Like... That's the first time, first year. Yeah. Um, and I mean, like, this is not to like delegitimize or saying these things aren't sports. Just like these are kind of like the random sports. Like, yeah, super they're there. Yeah. So yeah. Um, we'll give that thought. Good sports. Exactly. 